In this video, we discuss the characteristics of networks and the importance of protocols and standards. So first of all, what exactly is a network? Well, a single computer not connected to anything else is simply known as a standalone machine. As soon as you connect one computing device to another, either via cable or wireless, you have a network. Networks come in all sizes. Small business networks with a handful of devices, large corporate networks with thousands of devices, all the way to the largest network in the world, the internet. There are both advantages and disadvantages to networks. Obviously, an advantage is users can now share files. They can share peripherals and connections to other networks. You can access files from any computer on that network. You can have central servers that help to control things like security, software updates and backups, and it allows for easy communication via email and social networking. There are, however, some downsides. There's an increased security and risk to data now it's more widely available. Malware and viruses spread more easily between computers connected to a network. If you're reliant on a server and it fails, computers connected to it may no longer work. And computers might start running slower if there's a lot of data traveling across the network. The next thing we need to discuss is the importance and need for standards. Now we already live in a world where standards are applied very inconsistently. In the field of computer science, establishing standards is vital. Standards are simply a set of hardware and software specifications that allow manufacturers to create products and services that are compatible with each other. Without standards, most devices wouldn't be able to interact or communicate with one another at all. For example, let's look at character sets as a standard. If one device recognizes this binary sequence as a capital A, we need other devices to recognize the same sequence as a capital A as well. HTML is an example of an early standard adopted within the World Wide Web for the displaying of web pages in browsers. Another concept we need to understand is that of a protocol. A key way of ensuring technologies-based standards are established is to adhere to and use protocols. Much like spoken languages, if two devices have different protocols, they can't communicate. However, if two devices share the same protocol, they can exchange information. In other words, they speak the same language. Now, the OCR clarification document states that candidates should be able to discuss examples of protocols that may be used in a network or the Internet, but you're not actually going to be asked to recall information about a specific protocol. Now, rather unhelpfully, the example don't actually go on to list an example of the sort of protocols they might expect you to know. However, based on previous exam papers and other example specifications, we're briefly going to discuss nine of the most common protocols that are used for communication, web page transfer, file transfer and email. So here's the list we're going to go through and you'll find that if you have a high level awareness of the following nine protocols, you should be able to answer almost any question in the exam about this topic. So first, TCP, IP and UDP. The Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, provides error-free transmission between routers. The Internet IP routes packets across a wide area network. Together, they make up the TCP IP protocol stack, the foundation of communication over the Internet. The User Datagram Protocol, UDP, uses a simple connectionless transfer model. It's an alternative to TCP, but doesn't have any error checking. It's used to send short messages using datagrams where speed is more important than accuracy. It maintains an open two-way connection, which is ideal for online gaming. It's largely obsolete now, as it's significantly less reliable than TCP.
Next, we have the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, and it's a way for a client and server to send and receive requests and deliver HTML web pages. It's the fundamental protocol of the World Wide Web. The Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, HTTPS, is effectively the same as HTTP, except it adds in encryption and authentication. HTTPS should be used whenever a website deals with sensitive information, such as a password or bank account details. Next, we have the File Transfer Protocol, or FTP. This is a protocol used for sending files between computers, normally on a wide area network. Often people use FTP clients, pieces of software that sit on top of the actual FTP protocol. When you interact with this software, the client generates and sends the appropriate FTP commands. And finally, we have a set of email protocols. Now the three most popular are used in conjunction with mail servers to deal with email. Mail servers can be thought of as kind of like a virtual online post office, handling incoming and outgoing mail. The simple mail transfer protocol, SMTP, transfers outgoing emails between servers and from email clients to servers. The post office protocol, POP, retrieves emails from a mail server and transfers them to your device. In doing so, it removes the email from the server in the process. The more modern and more widely used Internet Message Access Protocol, IMAP, keeps emails on the mail server. This way, it allows you to maintain synchronicity between different devices. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are the features of a protocol and what do we mean by a standard?